Hey everybody, what up? It's Scuffy here, and we are going to be talking about uh, the sentence mechanic. This is going to be a recruit level video, so for those of you unfamiliar with the sentence mechanic, um, it's going to be kind of a step-by-step -step kind of explanation, give you some tips, some tricks, and hopefully you'll walk away with a better understanding in terms of how sentenced works. So let's get to it. Now the sentence mechanic, it's important to note here, is a... Uh, a mechanic that's exclusive to the Raven Guard. So that means that they are currently the only ones in the game who have the mechanic. What is sentenced, you ask? What is it? What does it do? Well, sentenced is basically you put a counter, sentenced one in this instance, Numa Squad, onto an enemy for that turn. Every time that card, that unit, takes damage from any source, it takes an additional one damage or damage equal to the sentenced that it has upon it. Um, and that stays on there and through the course of the turn. Some effects cause sentence to be permanent. Um, and if you've got like a damage source that's just straight one damage, it's going to do one plus in this case one. If you've got a card, and there are a few out there that do random damages several times, like Fury from Above specifically, this deals one damage randomly three times. So it could do one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, and therefore stack. This card uh, has seen some revision initially. It did one damage four times. It now does one damage three times. Um, but basically, we're going to run Nev because I don't get to do enough Agapito Nev. Um, and I just jacked it full of Sentenced, and really his, his ability kind of synergizes with Sentenced. Not that he creates Sentenced, but that he just synergizes with targets that are Sentenced. The Raven Guard themselves um, are very fragile in terms of their health. You've got a few beefy units, but overall not too many. So in order to uh, mix that up, they can do a massive burst or outpour of damage with the sentence effects, but those effects have to be stacked or proper triggering. Um, now, sentenced does indeed stack, so if you have sentenced one from one source and you apply sentenced one from another source, you have a sentenced two target. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to see that here in the practice game. Okay, that's a good way to get started. It's very basic once you actually get going with it. Um, but it's 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 a like I said, it's a good way to do burst damage, especially if you kind of can set it up from the shadows, as it were, for the Raven Guard specifically. So now I don't really have anything to blow here, but I can give sentence one to Tyke. Why am I forgetting his name all of a sudden? Typhon. Now, Agapito is going to deal two damage. He's going to take the two. Then he's going to take the additional one. You'll see the little raven feather burst. Boom. And then I've got, and I get to draw a card with my ability. That's simply how it works. So he took three damage for three energy. However, if I can keep this going, I might be able to apply more damage. Now we've got no witnessed. Gives sentence two to an enemy troop. Let's just go ahead and do that. Just to do it. Just to show you. So he's got sentence two. Now he has sentenced three. He's going to take two damage from Nev. And he's going to take three damage from the sentenced. That's It's it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So through the course of this game, hopefully there'll be a couple uh, options uh, to kind of see how it triggers here a little bit. So we've got a four going on. Now, I could give him, uh, I'm not going to run that. What I am going to do is I'm going to build up some sentenced. I'm going to take a little bit of beef here. Oh, yeah. Dig it. Okay. Now he's got a four health, so that is gonna hurt. Um, ah, let's just go ahead and take the four or not. Take the four or not. You know what? Let's shoot for the stars on this. I'm gonna take some damage here, and I'm gonna look to just do a crap ton of damage on my next turn, hopefully. 
to whatever source I choose, which is probably going to be these uh, these troops. Now there are some cards, for instance, for whom the Pell tolls, which gives it to any unit, any enemy unit rather, uh, and then there are some that specifically target troops. Um, let's go ahead first off. Let's let's KO this guy with a little bit of Moore's action, and then we will clear house here now you'll notice here I mean the damage output can be very high I've technically got the ability to do a lot of damage but it requires setup uh, and there's a couple different ways to go about it with the Raven Guard but it definitely does require a, a, a pace within the game now uh, Cade's next has recently seen a revision to his ability he originally came in and just gave the warlord uh, the opponent's warlord sentence two. now you have to pay for that however that effect becomes a permanent effect uh, compared to how it originally was so that's pretty uh, that's pretty interesting okay so here's a good example here we've got let's go sentenced one from the attack and then we're going to go ahead and apply the fury from above yeah let's go ahead might as well best time to do it I could just do this, the troop squad, but just to kind of show it in case there's other, he drops other troops. So each time there, that's a three damage card, but with the additional sentence, it did an additional three damage. And just like that, I dealt two damage plus, an, so you can see how quickly that's going to snowball. And depending on what he plays here, I might be able to do that again. Looks like I might be able to do that again. I'll take the six. He only's got five. Eh. Shucks. Okay, now that now that ability does not stay on for the turn. Oh, perfect. And if you're trying to set up combos with the Raven Guard, there are definitely some great ways to do it within Escapable Cell, uh, Hidden Run effects. Um, let's just go ahead and keep the pressure on. Typhon is a very, uh, very pernicious with his healing ability, so it kind of works out that we're doing some sentencing here. I really want to get Cades on the field just to kind of show you the stacking up, because he's going to stack up two, and then two and two, and I think I've got enough time through the course of this game to do that. Um, Death Guard are just going to, just going to eat things up anyways. So let's go ahead and just. This is how. Typically, Raven Guard at the higher levels, or if you got the rarity cards, uh, wrap games up. Now, I don't have to, that's the wonderful thing about Sentenced here. I don't have to really necessarily worry about his front line. It gets past that. If I was fighting a Salamander with Survivor, um, to an extent, uh, Sentenced also gets past Survivor. You have, still have to deal the damage, but then the survivor, the sentence damage kicks in as a secondary. So I'm going to do three here, you'll note. Then I'm going to do, oh geez, do I do that? Do I do that? Do I do, that would give him five, and then he's going to do seven, but that's not enough to finish him. So let's hold off. I don't know if I'm going to win this game up. He put down quite a few troops on his last turn. Eight plus three, yeah, we've got the math. You gotta do math here. You gotta do math. Two plus three, and he went from a you know three point lead to losing the game just like that. Um, and that's kind of how sentence works. So it's, I mean it's a little bit longer to kind of show you, but there's plenty of examples within this video within that game. It's just a basic level game with a bunch of just random sentence cards to show you how it works. That is the sentenced mechanic. Um, if you like it, you got to play Raven Guard because they are the only ones who have it. Uh, and let's talk about how you deal with sentenced. Well, how do you deal with a ability that racks up massive damage on you? Well, there's only a few abilities here uh, that actually are ways to get around it or to avoid it or to uh, negate it. Uh, shield helps slightly. Shield, if you have got a troop or a unit that's shielded, um, that helps with the initial damage source. The sentence damage is still going to trigger once that shield goes down. So you take three, 
and their sentenced one, their shield will take the three, the sentenced one will go through. Um, as I mentioned, Survivor doesn't really get around it. It, it. it makes it a little bit harder to kill the troop, but it's not a way to avoid it. Stealth is probably the best way to avoid uh, sentenced. If a unit or a warlord is stealth, they cannot be targeted by your uh, opponent's abilities, thus making it impossible without them having a card that breaks your stealth uh, to, to apply sentence to you. Now, Cade's prior to his errata, uh, which is you know just within this last month, that would apply because it was just a straight target on the Warlord, applied sentence to, to the Warlord, but now he can give that to anybody and he's got to use it as an ability, which means he has to target them. So... Uh, if you're stealth or you have the units that that you think your opponent's going to go after are stealth, you can avoid that. Um, you know, healing or having a very high advantage in health is not really a way to avoid it, but it is a way to uh, prevent its effectiveness. Um, really, with the Raven Guard, you've got to go after them. And, and in, in this particular game here, you saw, I mean, it wasn't necessarily this, this, the stealth won me the game, but what really won was the fact that my units were stealth through the course of the game. This is obviously just a basic uh, bot, um, but that's a good reason, a good example of reasons to include anti-stealth cards to some degree, whether it's just two, one, or a few cards that... Um, do widespread damage such as the artillery strike, defensive satellites, and honestly if you're including those two in your deck you should probably just use informant network uh, for the same purpose. It's a little bit cheaper but does serve two purposes widespread damage and it breaks stealth and you can't go wrong there. Um, another way to avoid or to negate a uh, sentenced if your target has, if your character, um, when I say character I mean unit not necessarily warlord, but your war, your unit, your troops, have been sentenced. As you can, you can return them to your hand, um, which would they're, they're not they don't that doesn't stay in their hand uh, doesn't stay on them once they return to your hand. But you'd have to redeploy them. So it depends. That's kind of a gambly move. Um, it would be very very specific. And in the same degree, you could also play uh, sabotage or a similar jam effect you would lose any other abilities that that card has. However, the sentence would go away. The problem with that, of course, is that your opponent can just reapply the sentence. Um, and as I said, there's not too many cards that apply it permanently. No witnessed applies it permanently. You'll notice here that it does not say till the end of turn, whereas for whom the bell tolls is a little bit more costly, but it can go to any unit, but it's just for this turn. Primarily, people use this to stack on the Warlord at the end to kind of wrap up games. Um, Dravian Clade gives enemy vehicle troops sentence three. That's a permanent, as long as he's on the board, that's not going anywhere. You could jam him to get rid of the sentence three, but jamming your own vehicles is not going to get rid of the sentence three. You would get rid of it, and then it would just come right back. Um, and then Cade's ability is also a permanent. And then you've got, you know, the Moors, Moors Dathan, uh, and the Numa squads here. Those guys apply it just through the course of the turn. So it's it's hard to counter. Your biggest counter really is to put pressure on, put damage, as you noticed, in using those abilities. Galen squad requires energy. Moors Dathan requires energy. Uh, Numa squad requires energy. No, I'm not adding cards to my deck. No, thank you. Um, those require energy to use along with the tactics and using the warlord's ability so if you can find a way to put the crimp and pressure on uh, raven guards energy usage through the course through the use of either um you know if, if you jump ahead of them with asteroid sanctuary asteroid belts if you're the alpha legion and you've got saboteur squad maybe even if you play um terror tactics to increase the cost of their troops it makes it harder for them to get their stuff on on board the table i think down the road we might see the potential of abilities um certain troops increasing the cost of enemy unit abilities you know maybe that might be something nifty that the thousand suns could have uh, but that's just speculation um so there's not really a way to increase the cost of those however if you 
if you are up on them on their energy or you f can find a way to break their energy uh, curve so to speak then they can't respond or, or combo as quickly and as efficiently um, and you know that's probably just your, your best options to go with. Unfortunately, because they're stealth and because sentence is applied on their turn, kind of in the same way perfection, it's kind of hard to, to counter directly. So you have to figure out just how to play around it. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, you with the right timing, a little bit of luck, and also with understanding how uh, your opponent can apply that sentence to you um, and the damage they can do, you don't underestimate it because if you underestimate it, and this was just a bot there, but uh, it, it can quickly, rapidly snowball, and before you know it, you know, he thought he was safe behind a front line, maybe you think you're safe behind a front line, and then you just took 14, 15 damage. That's game, and and uh, and it came out of nowhere. It came out of the shadows, so to speak. So, anyways, that's it. That's the sentence mechanic. Um, I hope that sheds some light on it. I hope that was a little bit educational. And uh, that's going to be it for the Raven Guard. Um, I believe the next the next little uh, mechanic we'll go into here is going to be siege. Yeah, we're going to do siege on the next on the next uh, video. And that is that is an interesting one to do. Some pros and cons with that one, and it's not exclusive to the Iron Warriors, but we'll be using the Iron Warriors to show it. So. Um, all right, well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you've got this video useful for yourself as a newer player and you know other newer players, please recommend it. Um, have people tune in, check it out. I've got some other uh, recruit level stuff for the newer players who are joining the game via Steam. And uh, hopefully you find this to be useful. So until then, keep playing Legions, and we'll see you later.